Uh, social media is a really, really big topic. So for the first few hours, we're gonna do an overview. Uh, so we're gonna really cram, cram in a lot of stuff in the hour that we have. My goal really isn't to teach and explain the nuances and details of everything with social media, but really give you an overview. So for some of you who are not quite familiar with some of the social media topics and concepts, at least you could have said, oh, I've heard that before, I get it. And you can dive in deeper from there. So I really want to be able to give us a lot of uh, information, but really at a higher level. And of course, some of the more detail about some of the how-tos we've even heard so far from uh, uh, the other presentations this morning. So about me, my name is David Shuckman. Uh, I have my own information technology consulting company. It's called Princeton Technology Advisors. I'm in Princeton. I know technology and I advise people. Um, about some of the things that we do, um, do new websites, do updates to websites, uh, or redesigns, which are kind of in the middle. Also technology managed services for any small business or not-for-profit organizations that may need uh, like help with their virus scanning or maybe cabling their office, new firewalls and stuff like that. All the tech words that are probably <laughs> confusing to oops, a lot of people. Uh, technology project management and also what we'll talk about today, SEO or search engine optimization, search engine marketing. I do email marketing, we're not really going to get into that today, but we can talk offline or during lunch, I'm happy to. And even though I'm a tech guy, I can write. So I'm a blogger, I've been blogging for uh, about three and a half years now, and it's on my website as well. I've got probably about 85 or so posts. I think blogging is a great means with information. We'll talk a little about that as well. So let's get into it. What is social media? We've heard some people use words or terms about it, um, either today or, or before we got here. I saw a really great definition, and I thought this, this was terrific. It's the collective of online communications channels dedicated to community-based input, interaction, content sharing, and collaboration. I heard this. This was terrific. Is this clear? <laughs> And that's what I thought. I liked it, but I thought it's not really clear. So in other words, it's using the internet to share information among people. And that's really what we use social media for. And it could be anything, not just as authors and publishers, really all walks of life as well. So really think of it more as the second, sharing information. But the communications channels are the things that we're gonna kind of talk about. So here are some of the communications channels. And um, the website is kind of the center. That's why it's a big circle there. And I call this the hub of your online strategy. And if you kind of look at this, it's like a wheel with a hub in the center connected with spokes. And that's very much the way social media works. The website, in my opinion, the website is the strongest, most important part of your strategy. And connected to the spokes are these other channels. And we're gonna talk about some of these. We won't get into all of them today. So um, uh, we're going to move forward from there. So first of all, why do you think your online presence is so important? Any thoughts? That's where everybody goes. So People go. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Any, anything else? She, she got the slide back earlier. Yeah. You need to monitor what people are saying about you. Sure, sure. And we're going to talk about the analytics towards the end of this presentation. Yeah. So the reason why social media is so important, your online presence is so important, it's where your customers expect you to be. This is really what the, the gist of it is. So people are searching for products, for information online all the time. We all do it. Even if we're not looking for books and authors and things we're interested about in this room, we do it all the time. Uh, school schedules, e-shopping, all sorts of things. We're always online. A professional site or professional websites and using social media, it really enhances and gives your brand credibility. Your brand is what people kind of know about you, the kind of broad message and the feeling you want people to get about you. So it gives you credibility. It demonstrates your knowledge, your interest, your expertise. It gets to tell your audience more about you other than just what they're hearing on their own. And you get to control the message, which is really and if you're not yet known, this is a place where people can begin to find out about you. You can find out just about anything on the internet, regardless of what they say, not all of it's true, but of course the message you're gonna put out will be true, and it'll 
be a place where people can begin to know about you. So if you are not being found, or if you have a website, no one's calling, um, we're going to get into some more of that. But you start with, um, you, have, you got to have that presence. you got to be there. And the bottom line is, if you're not found online, you're irrelevant. So think of it, the way you advertise. Years ago, when we were younger, we went to the Yellow Pages for something that we needed. There's no Yellow Pages anymore. And even if, well, there is kind of a yellow book. It's on the internet. The yellow book, and I'll tell you, it's very expensive. The yellow book, have you ever uh, asked how much it costs to advertise? It's extraordinary. Each like, county or area that you get is about $350. Right? But you both put your website up, it's viewable around the world. And the social media site is viewable around the world. But more and more, the, the, um, the, the phone companies don't put out uh, phone books anymore. If you're not found online, now that doesn't mean if someone is not looking for you, but when someone is looking for someone like you, they're looking for an author or a genre and want to find some information, if you're not coming up, then you can't announce yourself to them or even make that sale. So it's very important. And the reason why I know it's true, and this is absolutely, you could take this to the bank, it's in bold red. And that's why you know it's true. So to benefit from social media, you really need to build a clear strategy. And you have to set goals and, and, uh, and make sure you understand what it is you're going to achieve. That's a little bit of like the marketing presentation we heard uh, just earlier this morning. Got to have clear goals, got to have clear strategy. And it's an iterative process, and it contains all these things. You start with goals. Make sure you understand who your audience is. Different genres, different areas in publishing, you have different audiences. And then choose the platform or platforms where you wish to promote yourself. Then start creating the content. And that could be iterative as well, either because you're adding or changing what you have. And then you implement that. And then measure and track, as the lady in the back said, and adjust. And you may have to do that over and over again. Now, this is not all time consuming. You'll put a little bit more time in up front. But once you start getting right and see your audience, this, um, you spend less time with this. So it's not a forever thing but it's something that is very helpful. So, setting your goals among the things, and we're not gonna talk about smart goals and all that kind of stuff, just more conceptually. Know your audience, know who you want to engage with. Some of us think, I'm an IT guy, I can engage with anyone, I can do IT anywhere, but what I've learned in business is, uh, having a niche is very important. Uh, we heard that yesterday, Cassie's discussion. Having a niche is very important. Because when you can target that niche, you can increase your results. So make sure you know your audience. Also, figure out what type of content it is that you wish to promote and wish, wish to post. How often will you do it? Where will you do it? These are all things that you need to keep in mind as you are building and developing your social media strategy. Um, be aware of how to use those different social media channels or the different platforms and tools. It doesn't mean you have to know all of them. Not all of them are appropriate to any one of us, but there may be a couple that are pretty good. Either we like them and they're easy, or it's, it's really the best for us. <coughs> Make sure you know how to use them so that when you need to post, especially fairly quickly, you can do so fairly quickly. You can respond quickly. And also, make sure you understand what you want to happen as a result to posting. So some of us will say, well, I want to sell more books. Well, that's okay. Make sure the content can kind of drive that message. But whatever your other goals are, become important. Make sure you want to know what happens. We're going to get into measuring it a little bit later. Oops. So as an author or publisher, think about this. Who's your audience? Nobody has an audience. Yeah. Uh, my audience is um, coaches and the healing community and you know, new people who are wanting to build their businesses, create a marketing foundation, and create a visibility. Terrific, sure. That's your audience. Her audience may be different than anybody else's audience. And it also is almost like sector driven, who, who you're publishing to or for. So I actually saw this whole list from a New York Times article. Um, your personal reader network. So uh, I think the, the few people have talked about uh, in the presentations, I first started talking to my friends and family, giving out books to people that we know that care about us. They're, they could be part of our audience, probably for everybody who writes that's an audience. It's your network of fans and fan, friends and family. 
The bookstore browser, or we could say the website browser too, with the Amazon online and the Barnes and Noble online. You you may want to target content for the people that are kind of have browse you. They don't know you yet, but you want to try and interest them a little bit. Maybe that's part of your audience. People who buy books for others. And that's kind of a broad category. It's not just someone buying a gift for a friend, because they're almost like the, um, the prior one, which is bookstore browser. But what about professors that are buying for students? Or what about executives that are buying for their team, or coaches that are buying for uh, the people that they're clients? Right? So they're buying a little bit differently. Maybe that's your audience. Um, the retail buyer. That's not the person in the bookstore. That's the person that's buying inventory. You, maybe that's your audience. You want to attract someone who may buy 100 copies of the book to put on shelves of their store or, or put on their website, promote on the website. <clears throat> and also the media. You may want to attract the media because if you get a little media attention, Cassie like talked about last evening, you had that radio program that you were surprised by and look at the benefit that you've got. So sometimes your audience can be your media. And it doesn't mean you're going to write one thing that's going to track all five of these. You might have, at different times, a different message, because you're targeting that audience specifically. So as we're on social media, let's think about what should social media really be about now? What's it all about? A lot of people on social media, and if you have kids and grandkids, social media is about me. What can I do? What can I get? Where can I go? Who can I play with? Social media is very selfish for some people. But for those of us that want to be very active in social media and benefit from social media and reach an audience, uh, what we want to think about is, how can I help you? It has to be about them. And that's what really becomes important. Think about the people you're willing to help in your lives, whatever that is. It's likely the people that have helped you already. So we're starting that, 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 that process right. We're going to help people. We'll do that by providing information through the different channels on our website, the different social media platforms. We'll get into a few of the platforms in a few minutes. And it's the quality and value of the information more than the quantity of information. I actually have a client, this is my first client when I became independent. Uh, I rebuilt his blog site for him, and I learned as I was doing the, pro the project, he blogged twice a day. I was overwhelmed, but that's what he was doing. He's since ratcheted back a little bit, but uh, that's what he was doing. I thought that was a lot. And also what you want to do, regardless of the platform or platforms that you're on, remember that hub, you want to get people to go back to your website, because that's the main place where you can control and and promote your message, or advertise your books, or advertise your services. Right? We'll get into more of that too. So, let's talk about some of the most cost, of, uh, or most effective, not cost effective, most effective platforms. So, B two B, if you're not familiar, is business to business. So, if you are marketing to that professor or that um, that coach, kind of business people, these are the platforms that may be best. And this is by a um, uh, content marketing institute of last year. LinkedIn. You need to have a LinkedIn profile. And LinkedIn has actually two types of pages. LinkedIn has your personal page, maybe some of you have, and it has your business page as well. And so it's, I work for your business. You may want to create a page about your, um, your, your writing business. Twitter, another great site. We're going to talk about both of those. These are the ones that B2B people, the business people use. It. And then start going down. YouTube is also very big. YouTube now is owned by, uh, by Google. And then some of these others we're just not going to get into. So when you're marketing B2B, you want to kind of be in the space up here. For B2C, business to consumer, where we're kind of marketing to the end user reader of our book, it flips a little bit. Facebook is really number one. And there's YouTube again and Twitter. Okay. Remember, these slides are all downloadable. I see you're making notes. I'm trying to get through a lot of information quickly. I leave time for questions and answers. So, so which social media bet platform is best for you? Who wants the answer? It depends. Yes. It depends. Anyone know Marty Latman? 
No? Okay, so it's, you know, yeah, yeah, I know, you know one. Yeah, you ask him a question, everything is depends. You can't be everywhere. It's just too time consuming. You had your 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 day job maybe, or you had your daily lives, your daily obligation. You can only put so much time into social media. So recognize that you really can't be everywhere. As you get good with one, you may move on to the next one. So what you want to do is you want to determine the one that's most relevant for your audience. Remember a couple slides back, there were up to five different audiences that you can be a part of. So think about, it. what's your genre? What are you writing about? Especially if you're a writer, if you're a publisher, are you playing in a specific space? Where does your audience hang out? Where is your audience? You want to be on the sites where your audience is. Why is that? They can find you. You can engage with them. Yeah, they're your customers, your clients. You also want to be where your competitors are. That almost sounds counterintuitive. But why do you think you want to be where your competitors are? Looking for your service. Yeah, the audience is already looking there. So I'll give you an example of how that works outside the uh, publishing. Anyone ever go out for a drive? Maybe we're in the mood, you want to go to a fast food restaurant. Not that we always are in that mood. Right, so the first fast food restaurant you see, whatever it is, what's next door across the street? Another, Another fast food restaurant. They figured it out. You ever go car shopping? The dealerships are near each other because you may be on your way to the Ford dealer and you see that nice Nissan in the parking lot you may pull over. They figured it out. Years ago in malls, restaurants were away from each other. Now there's a food court. They figured it out. So let's learn from them. We want to be where our competitors are because that's where our, our customers, our audience is looking. And you do have to experiment. You have to measure your results. We'll talk a little about that. You'll adjust. Social media does take time to produce results. If you're lucky, you get it right the first time. That doesn't happen a lot. And once you discover what works, you stick with that. Things that aren't working very well, put it aside. Right? Or maybe change the way you're engaging on those locations. So sometimes it's content. Sometimes it's the sites that you're on. So it does take time. So let's talk about some social media sites for authors. Uh, so again, I'm not an author, I'm a blogger, so I'm not on a lot of these sites, but I did some research and I found out about this. So number one, a lot of us know Amazon. Have you heard of Amazon? Right? It actually started as a bookseller online, and people thought it was going to fail very miserably. Amazon's now into everything, one of the biggest companies on the planet. It started in 1994 as Amazon.com. And it's mentioned a couple times this morning. Uh, they do offer some self-publishing services, Kindle Direct Publishing, or KDP. It's basically, well, it starts out as free, there's different ways, but it's e-publishing. So you can create your, your book or your manuscript and just publish it online as an e-version. So I think a lot of you know about that already. And then they also have what's called Create Space. And what's nice about Create Space you can print your paperback book on demand. You don't need an inventory. Now, you may need a small inventory if you're going to book fairs and clubs and things like that, of course, but you can print what you need and not worry about, do I have to print 100 or 1,000? So it's pretty much on demand. So these are nice services that Amazon offers. And some, I think some of the other speakers will talk more about that. Another one, Goodreads. Have you heard of Goodreads? Mm -hmm. Okay. So Goodreads, it's actually owned by Amazon. Just when you thought you didn't want to do business with Amazon, right? They, they uh, have reported they have over 55 million users. Their mission is to help people find and share books, the ones that they love. That's their mission, it's on their website. It's free to use. You can add books to your personal bookshelves, your collection. You can rate and review books. Anybody have issues with that? It's okay, yeah. I'll get them. Well, it's good to be seen. I mean, there's really value because there are, it goes along. You can see what other people are reading. That becomes interesting as well. And you can get suggestions from future readings. So as your content is out there, if it can be associated with other reads as well, you may get more attention that way. Um, for authors, I don't know if you knew this, this pay-per-click advertising. Were you aware of that in Goodreads? Pay-per-click advertising means you can actually put a little ad on the website and it's probably free. I haven't looked into the details. If it works like Google, it's free. But if someone clicks on it, then you pay so many cents or dollars for the click. It's almost like you're willing to pay, and it's a marketing thing, you're willing to pay if someone will go to look at my book. 
that's more valuable than just paying and not knowing who will look at, look at your book. Can you set a ceiling on that? I don't know. On Google, you can. If you're do, doing Google AdWords, I'm not uh, versed well enough in um, good news. And I wasn't planning to talk about AdWords, but we can during the Q&A session. Issue, have you heard of this? Yeah, thank goodness, I got one. So, um, they're connecting content with people. That's what their mission is. It's in quotes, it's on their website. It's on their website, it must be true, right? So, it's a digital publishing platform. Magazines, newspapers, portfolios, DIY guides, all sorts of things. You are the publishers. So, take a look at issue. Um, they give you tools that um, get your content online. I actually have a client now, she's writing her book. I actually learned about it from her. And one of the things we're looking to do is put some of her content, let's say a chapter or so, and they've got one of those tools where you can click on the page and it flips over, and we're gonna embed that in her website. Um, they have a free subscription, your first 100 megabytes are free. Doesn't matter what you publish, it's free. And then they have a monthly subscription as well. So, Scribe, how about that? Have you heard of that? Can't fall asleep yet, although I know you lunchtime. It's coming. Uh, it's kind of similar. So you can read basically, it's a subscription service. Um, you read anything that they have online on any device. So it's good for laptops, tablets, cell phones. You create a digital library, or they have a digital library, of over 500,000 audio and print books. Members are basically a diverse community of authors and publishers and readers. Readers, that's what you want. Okay? And uh, you can publish documents, again, up to 100 megabytes. So um, it's kind of a big file, so that's pretty good. It's probably not as easy for lots of books, but to get some content out there, to get some recognition. And their subscription, this is what I found online. Um, it's a monthly subscription um, at a time, three books, one audio book, and unlimited magazines and documents and it's nine bucks a month. First 30 days are free. Try it for 30 days, see if it's something that you like. In the 30 day subscription, you can't mm -hmm. upload it. That's a way short enough. But see if it's a site, see if there's a lot of content in your genre in these sites. You may want to be there because your audience is there. And what about some of the big ones? They were mentioned a little bit earlier. Facebook. Bottom line, Facebook is the largest social media platform on the planet. Was that not clear? <laughs> oh, oh, about a quarter of the people on planet Earth have a Facebook account. They're considered active users. It's very good for reaching what's called consumers. Families, friends, they do a lot with business, but not as much. But if you have uh, your audience a more end user type, you want to have a Facebook page or business page there as well. You can also pay for advertising, similar to pay-per-click. So you can set a budget as well and, and your ads pop up. You've probably seen Facebook where ads pop up sometimes. You could be one of those ads. LinkedIn, again we mentioned the, uh, before, it's the number one uh, social media platform to reach a uh, business, a uh, business audience. Uh, they have over 100 million active users. And if anyone's in job seeking, they have over 500,000 recruiters on LinkedIn. So if you know anyone who's job hunting, make sure that they have a LinkedIn profile. Also a very good platform. There's a free model and a, a paid model as well. We won't go into all the differences right now. The free is good for about 98% of the stuff that you're gonna do. Okay. Twitter, you can write as much as you want in 140 characters or less. So anybody have writer's block sometimes? Tweet. It was a dark and stormy night. Send. Forget your hashtags. Well, you can put hashtags on some of them too, yeah. Yeah, I'm writing. Works all the time. You get connected all the And what, but really what you use this for is you let your followers know of maybe an upcoming event. Maybe you're going to be somewhere. Make an announcement that you just launched a book. Launch a book and go to Amazon, go to my website. So it's really short by that. Anyone unsure if Twitter is really workable, is usable? Anyone wonder how valuable it might be as a tool? Have you learned anything about the 2016 presidential election? Politics aside, Twitter was used 
very successfully, uh, well, one candidate more successfully than the other, uh, to get a message out. And a lot of times, those candidates weren't connected to the people that were getting the message because other people got the message and talked about it. And that's what happens with social media, even something as simple as up to 140 characters. So social media is very effective. People are there. Blogging. So this is one of my favorite. Because uh, once I get to fill out a page, then I, I, I take a nap. So uh, what blogging is, if you're not very familiar with it, it's really a website or a page on your website. I like the idea of putting it as a page on your own website. That's what I do. You write these short articles, about a page in length or so, so five, 600 words, and those are called posts. That's what blogging is. A lot of platforms, I like putting it on a website. Posts provide information to your readers. It could be a few short paragraphs. Actually, shorter is probably better. And it really should be more of your opinion or some kind of information, not something really new or a discovery. I mean, if you came up with some really good discovery, find, this, find a journal in that industry. That's where you want to publish that. But you can give opinions. Maybe you read somebody else's book, write about it. Someone will like it and want to share that with other people. It could be snippets from your own book. It could be about service offerings if you're in the service sector. So you can also post not only on your own site, there are other sites as well. There may be other blogging sites for authors and publishers within your industry. Find those and see if you can post to those or get permission to post to those if they have blogs on. So my blogs are on two or three of sites right now, including mine. How do you, you find those sites? You look online on the internet. You just find them. Ask friends. Use social media. Yeah, you have to start doing a little research. We could talk offline a little bit about maybe there are ways or keywords, but yeah, have to look for them. Ask, ask for friends. Yeah. One of the things that I find most beneficial is when there's a blog that has been posted, then to take that blog and put it into your other social media outlet. You certainly can. Yeah, yeah, with a link. So, and we're going to talk about SEO in a moment, but putting links on your website and in your social media sites to other people's pages and sites is extremely powerful and relevant. So yeah, comment on it. Be visible. The more you comment, the more opportunity for someone to find you on a Google search. We'll talk more about that in SEO. Yeah? Uh, I have a website. It would be as simple as like I have different categories. Should I put another category on like my blogs? My, my what? My blogs. My blogs? Yeah. Sure, or it could be you might have at the top of menu and a click on that and you can go to it or a link on the page. It all depends on the structure of your, of your template. Yep. And Lisa will talk more about websites tomorrow. I'm going to talk a little about websites now, but not as much as she will. So website, it's, from my opinion, it's the, the center of your, your social media hub. So make sure you do develop and promote that well. I'm going to give you a couple of best practices. It's very important that you promote your website. You promote your website content. Did you see that Kevin Costner movie, Field of Dreams? If you build it, they will come, or he will come. Right? He spent the whole meeting, uh, movie trying to get somebody to come to his, his uh, baseball field. Websites are the same thing. As soon as you promote, uh, I'm sorry, publish your website, people don't yet know about it. So your content has to start promoting your website. It's not just enough to publish it, you got to let people know about it. Social media helps with that as well. You want to tell a little bit of a story. You can tell your story in your About Me page, or maybe if you write a series of books, you can tell a story, an overview about your books and what you're publishing. But it's important for people to connect with you and your story. And it's all about your customers, the people who are reading your website. Remember, social media for a lot of people is very selfish. It shouldn't be. It should all be about them. Provide information that's helpful to them. And you then can cross-promote on other social media platforms, and a lot of them are free. With uh, Facebook is free, LinkedIn is free, a lot of those sites are free, because they know they're building a community. So make sure you have links on your website to your social media site, maybe have links that like content on your social media site, and back to your website from those social media sites. Another good thing to put on websites are called calls to action. And a call to action is basically some sort of image or picture or statement. It's on your website, and it tells your visitors what to do. Okay? 
So subscribe for the newsletter. Download some free photos. Uh, yes, I want shipping or whatever. That one's from Amazon. Tell them to do something. Um, Melissa said, the ask. Melissa yeah, said, make the ask. Ask for something. Otherwise, they'll look at it and go, that's nice. But sometimes it's just give them a suggestion of what they want. An effective call to action really can increase the effectiveness of your message. And you may not just say, buy my book. You might say, please feel free to read my first chapter. From there, they can buy your book. There's also something called responsive design. It really is what makes the website look right on mobile. So if you look at this kind of presentation, it's widescreen. It's based on the laptop. Tablets are square. Phones are kind of tall. So you want to deliver your web pages, and you want to be on social media platforms that can deliver nicely in different sizes. So, and the content, the website figures it out. It knows what it's running on. It adjusts automatically. The user doesn't have to do anything. It's nicely in all those different sizes. And it's actually now the most common and flexible way to build a website. So if you happen to talk to a web designer and he's going to charge you or she big, big money to make it responsive, go find somebody else because it's kind of all built in right now. Yeah. About what? Well, they could charge you for the website, right? But if they say, oh, and if you want responsive, I'm going to charge you 50% more. Oh. No. Yeah. Okay. Shouldn't do that. There are things that are worth buying that's not an extra. It's like saying, if you buy this car, we'll throw in the tires, right? Buy more, pay more for the tires. No. And the last thing, 20% of millennials, those are people ages 18 to 35, don't have a desktop or laptop computer. They have mobile devices, which means your website, if you want to deal with and sell to and inform people in that age group, you need to make sure your website will be viewable nicely on that platform. And if you're wondering, because maybe most of us in the room are older than 18, if we want to appeal to that group, this is probably getting soon to be most of the buying audience right now. So again, you want to be not only where your audience is, you want to be how they view you. So not even a laptop, they're only doing things on the phone or not even a tablet? Usually a phone. Just yeah. Uh, my, my nephew bought a brand new computer because he's on his way to college. I was talking to him about it. He only bought it because he needed it for college. Right? He's 19 now. Bright kid, he's doing well, you know, happy. But his mindset is mobile device, the phone. So if you want to deliver content to the millennials, and the kids behind them are coming right up. So, <laughs> so we would like to be able to offer our services to this group of people. Let's talk quickly about e-commerce. This is one that sometimes sounds a little confusing, but you probably know it better than you really know. What e-commerce is, uh, buying stuff, uh, the purchase and sale of products or services through electronic channels, online, like the internet. Okay. We also know it as online shopping. Anyone here not ever do online shopping? E-commerce. People are buying. Those kids, the 18 to 35, that's what they're doing. Um, the big department stores are closing left and right because more and more people are buying online. Uh, Amazon is one of the big people or companies in that space. So you can electronically buy goods and services, let's say your books and services, with no barrier of time or distance. You can sell your book to somebody across the country, across the world, in the middle of the night when you're asleep by virtue of taking advantage of tools in e-commerce. So we'll touch on a couple of those, we won't go into great detail. eBay. Has anyone ever been on eBay? It started years ago simply as an auction site. I've got this old bottle, who wants to buy it? And everyone bid it up. But now it's become more and more a store. You can sell anything on eBay, brand new. You can purchase it now. Not an auction site anymore. Amazon.com or Amazon, you actually can create your own store in Amazon. So of course you can use Amazon to, if they're, if they're promoting the books that way, you can create your own store separate from whether they are or are not publishing your book or, or promoting your book. You can create your own store. I actually bought this mat from the mat factory. It's the one in the back. <laughs> um, uh, online at, at Amazon, so that I printed that out. 
So that's not so, sold on Amazon, but not by Amazon. This Matt's factory has their own store on Amazon. You can do it on your own website as well. This is actually one of my clients' websites. She's a life coach. She sells packages of time, and you just press those buy now buttons. And when you buy now, it registers on her website. You pay from PayPal, because that's how she flex. It's nice and easy. So that's a service that you're buying. In her case, she's selling a service, yeah. That's right, excuse me. But you can sell products as well. You can put a button on your website, buy my book. And there are e-commerce platforms. You can create whole e-commerce websites instead of using, um, let's say, a WordPress or any of the other tools. These are ones that are available. You build your website on their platform with putting up the pictures and all that kind of stuff. Um, I, I use this one, Shopify. Uh, upload photos. If you have multiple sizes for clothing and stuff, it's all managed there. What's nice is um, all you're doing is updating the content. You don't have to worry about creating the template of e-commerce. It's all there for you. So e-commerce best practices if you are going to use e-commerce. Make a good impression. I'm not sure that guy's making a good impression. Mm -hmm. So the copy, the content that you write, whether it's on your website or on your e-commerce site, make sure it's clear and it, it's, it serves your products well. Uh, make sure it's the kind of platform or on your website that can display on mobile devices, like I mentioned before, the youngsters that are buying. And show customer reviews. Become very powerful. It might be nice that you say it's a good book, but if someone else says it's a good book, that's more powerful. So if you can get customer reviews, that becomes powerful. Also, make it easy to make a purchase. Show all the prices up front. I've seen on Best Buy, every once in a while I shop around on Best Buy, and it says, put it in your shopping cart and I'll tell you the price. I think that's frustrating. And what they're hoping is, eh, it's in the cart, I'll buy it anyway. I, I hate that. Um, also have um, appealing shipping, you know, discounted shipping or free, um, free standard shipping or upgrade for free to overnight, um, and make a quick checkout process. Again, we're not going into all the details behind this, just some things to keep in mind if you're gonna go down this path. And also, be prepared to fulfill your orders. If you put this great ad on a great platform and get a great audience, and the orders come in, and you don't have product and boxes and mailing labels, you're in a little bit of trouble. So make sure that you're prepared. You keep an inventory if you need. Uh, make sure you have the packing materials. You can also hire fulfillment companies, companies that you just give them the stuff and they'll do it. You'll pay a little more for that. But of course, it frees you up to do other things. So just be prepared to fulfill your orders. Search engine optimization. Ranjan woke up. I, I spoke with Ranjan yesterday. He said, are you talking about search engine optimization? I said, I really wasn't. It's a big topic. He said, oh, I wish you would add it. Last night, I, am, so I hope, it, hope it works well. I apologize in advance if there are spelling mistakes. Uh, I know there are editors here. I guess. <laughs> search engine optimization, it's also called SEO, is an extremely big topic. We can do a summary in an hour. And we're going to do a summary in about two minutes. But basically what it means, what is it? It's the process of gaining visibility uh, in a very natural way in order to drive traffic to your website. Very simply, if you Google something, you want to be seen. And search engine optimization techniques can begin to get you off the back pages of Google and the other search engines up to the first or second page. Most of us don't go much past the second page. And organic means it does take time. Search engine optimization, like social media strategy, does take a little bit of time. There are two primary components to search engine optimization. It's called on-page SEO and off-page SEO. We'll talk about both of those in a minute. But do you know how search engines work? Put in a keyword, what happens? Where does it get, where does it get the list from? I want to users. Whoever went to this site the most times, that's okay. the first one. So, users, and users pardon? Users an algorithm. You, does use an algorithm. Paid ads. Pardon? Paid ads. Paid ads are a little bit separate, but yeah, they come up, the they come up ahead of the search results. I heard the term web crawler, I don't know what it means. That's, yeah, and that's right. So what it is, is you enter the term in the search engine. And what Google and search engines don't do are go out and query every user and every website on every server around the world and return the results, a million results in 1.1 seconds. It's not what they do. 
Some people thought that that's what it was very current. It's not. What it really does is night and day are web crawlers. What a web crawler is, is a computer program to search the world wide web. They're also called spiders that crawl the web. They run night and day. They look at the, at the users. They look at the other servers. They look at the other websites. And they find stuff. They're kind of stupid. They go, oh. And then they send that back to Google and put it in Google's database. And then Google starts figuring this stuff all out. So if they see that your book is on multiple <laughs> websites, or that your website is linked on other people's websites, then what begins to happen is Google says, gee, that you're more relevant than someone that doesn't have more links, that doesn't have more relevance in the place. You're more relevant. And Google makes that decision. It's part of the algorithm. So the reason why you get a search result really fast is they're very quickly searching the database and bringing the results back. And they do have powerful databases. And that's really the way it works. So your search results are a list of information from their database. So what does that have to do with SEO? So again, there are two types. There's on-page SEO and there's off-page SEO. On-page SEO is the stuff that you are in charge of. Your website content, your pictures, your social media platforms, your content, your posts, your writing, your putting, your uploading. Or if you're hiring someone, they're doing it for you, but it's all within your control. And you're putting the keywords. Also, make sure, especially if you're a more localized business, use keywords associated with your location. Because 20% of searches are done locally. I'm looking for an author in New Jersey. That sounds a lot, which is using that as an example. So you want to make sure that the title of your pages are relevant. So I've seen websites where they, you click on the page, and it's called page one. What's page one about? It's one better than page two. Other than that, I don't know what it's about. So give it, give it relevant names. Um, make sure your web address, as well as the pages have relevant names as well. These kind of web addresses associated with the page. Google likes them. It makes sense to, to Google. Google doesn't understand page one a whole lot. There's data that's hidden in websites. It's called metadata, meta descriptions. Um, the fields are about 156 characters. They're hidden. Nobody sees them, but the search engines learn more about the website by virtue of reading this stuff behind the scenes. And also, you can put similar sort of text in pictures. And it tells the search engines more about the website by virtue that they're in the picture. I'll give you a little bit of hint. If you're one of those people that download pictures from other websites, you know, you got the permission to do so, or you buy it from the, the photo sites, they sometimes put these things in their pictures. Clean out their stuff, put your stuff in. Make sure that you get your stuff in there. The more content about your pages and your website, make your web page and website more relevant to Google. Off page is really the view that others have. The activity is performed by others. You don't have as much control over that because it's what they are doing to uh, promote or alert your website. You have a little control, but not much. It does give the world an indication of how the world perceives you and your website. And it's the same with social media sites. Uh, you want to make sure that uh, it's, it's how they are perceiving your social media sites. The most important things that are relevant, remember, these are all downloadable. You want link building. You want links, especially within your industry, your genre, your service area. You want links from your website to other websites within your genre or your media, the things that are interesting to you. Google starts saying, well, if you're talking about romance and you're linking over there to romance, that's more relevant than you just talking about romance novels. You also want it the other way. You want industry sites in your industry or genre to also be able to link back to you. The greatest place to find those, your social media site. Your social media site will refer to your website and each of the and each of the other social media sites. Remember that that hub, remember, and the and the spokes? All those different areas in the spokes will go back to the website. The website will go back, will create like a matrix. Also, if you have friends and family uh, uh, who are authors as well, um, cross-promote each other, put each other's links on each other's websites. Maybe there are service providers you use. 
you're using, um, you're hiring Karen. Put a link on your website to Karen's. Ask her to do the same for you. Get cross promotion. It's good for her. It's good for you. Okay. And, and social media, as I mentioned before. Okay. So, some ways to improve SEO. This is the next hour of the presentation. Okay. Start with the on-page SEO. Remember I said that's what's in your control. That's what you can write about. That's where you can put the metadata, the alt tags. It's all within your control. It's a lot easier for you to do, put a lot more of your time. Maybe it's almost an 80-20 rule. I didn't really figure it out, but I like that 80-20 rule. But we'll put a lot more time there. Also on your social media sites as well. It's all within your control. The off-page SEO will take more time because it's the world. It's when others start seeing and finding you. So you want to promote your content in social media and blog sites, your website, so it slowly, eventually is found organically. And ask others, as I mentioned before, so have mutual links, begin to start those ties directly. Uh, place website links in your media platforms, so I said that already, good. Submit articles to online magazines, to other organizations, try and get your content published in other places. Even if it's free, it's giving you attention. Okay? So that becomes very important. The one thing that's good about search engine optimization is, even though it takes a while, and the same with social media marketing, even though it takes a while to kind of get hold, it's very durable. Once those connections are found and Google starts bringing you up higher, you stay there for a while. Okay. So analytics, home stretch. What is analytics? You want to monitor the performance and then make needed changes. So it's nice to have your website, it's nice to have your social media platform, how's it doing? And most of us will say, I don't know. So you want to have ways, analytics is analyzing the data behind all these different sites and there are tools that are available and some of them are free. So you want to measure the effectiveness of your social media programs, figure out what works, help you make better decisions. Things that are working, you'll do a little bit more of. Things that are not working so well, you'll maybe stop putting time or you'll remove. And you can, so you can focus more time and investment on the, on the more productive areas. Am I achieving my social media goals? Asking yourself that question. Analytics will help you do that. So, starting to use them. Google Analytics, have you heard of Google Analytics? Good. Excuse me. Adding Google Analytics to websites is actually free. You've got a, basically a Google account or a Gmail account. Every page needs to have the small piece of code. Every page on your website needs to have the small piece of code so that when someone clicks there, it reports back to Google. And you can see where visitors are coming from. Are they coming from Google? Are they coming from social media sites? Are they coming from other websites? That becomes interesting because if you start seeing the trends, you might want to target more and more in that area. You see uh, page views, clicks, bounce rate. Bounce rate is someone who lands on your website and leaves quickly, bounces off. If that's high, that means they're getting to your website, but you're not interested. You're not keeping them there. So that may tell you that you want to change your content a little bit. It becomes very important. A lot of social media sites have analytics, site analytics built in, and it kind of tells a lot of the same things. So look into that, see how much of the analytics are available in the different sites, the impressions, how many people are seeing your content, excuse me, and promotions. You decide what to do with the information. The analytics doesn't tell you what to do, but now you have all this information that can help you make a decision. And then you're able to fine tune your strategy and your site content. Yeah. Can you explain a little more about how you would embed uh, Google uh, yeah. Analytics site into your pages? Are you covering that? How you implant Google Analytics on pages? Yeah. Are you talking? Are you talking about tomorrow? So okay. So yeah. Okay. Right. So you have a website. Behind the website is programming, oversimplifying it, the, the web code that displays what you're doing. There's a piece of program that you put in, Google will give it to you, and it reports back to your Google account, essentially every time the website is used or clicked or accessed. 
and your web programmer should be able to do that. So, if they charge, they, they, you know, they should charge a little extra for that. I mean, it's a little extra work. It's not a lot of work, so don't pay a lot extra. For that. But that's essentially what it is. Yeah. Quick question: Can you just clarify what is alt tags? Alt tags are the hidden data associated with images and pictures. And you can't see it, I can't see it, but the website see it, the web crawlers see it. Okay. So in summary, as we wrap up, won't get any more hooks. So social media is using the internet to share information among people. So even though I like the other definition, this is really the simpler, easy one. And it includes your website, e-commerce, social media platforms, SEO, more. It's a big, big topic. And when you start to sit down and talk to people about it, you'll want to talk about your goals. And then you'll monitor, you'll tweak uh, your performance, you'll use tools that will really help you understand just how well your sites are working, how well your strategy is working. And get started with one. This is like, how do you eat the thousand pound elephant? One bite at a time. Social media is big. A lot of technology for non-tech people is big. Start with one thing. Get comfortable with it. And once you are comfortable with it, well, maybe then you can move on to the next one. Don't worry about that. You have to be on these five or ten platforms all at once. Start slow, but make progress. So, any questions? I guess so, yeah. Um, you, you mentioned about metadata in uh, websites. I heard years ago that the, uh, the uh, search engine companies just ignore it because people gain it, like they put in pornography terms and things like that, and all that is. So it's just ignored. But is, it, is your uh, belief? There, well, among the things that they've done is meta tags, there's actual HTML computer programming. Um, you could put as much as you want in there. You can, you can put books, 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 forever. What I'm told, and no one really knows what Google is as we figure it out, they look at the first 156 characters. Uh, there are certain metadata that aren't used anymore or aren't looked at anymore. It may change. Bing may look at things differently. Yahoo may look at things differently. But Google, about 89% of the searches are done on Google code first for Google. 89-11 Google. <laughs> so thank you for putting the issue. That was very good. Uh, one, one question I struggle with and not here. Uh, for writers on Facebook, there is a profile and there is a page. Yeah. What's the difference and what do we need? Um, if you're talking about a page like a business page, um, it's talking, so the profile is kind of you and your content and your wall and all that kind of stuff. The page is now almost like the business side of it. And it can and, be liked. Oh yeah. Cannot, so. Yep. So they're they're separate entities that get related by virtue of let's say you're working there or you're you're, you're connected to it. If it's a bigger topic. We'll talk about it offline if you want. But yeah. 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 What's your favorite uh, app to back in your WordPress site? What's my favorite app to back? I know you can put your uh, what's my favorite app or platform for backing into? Um, you might know better. I'm, you're, I don't know. I'm not big on WordPress. I do a bit of it. I mean, for SEO, it's. I haven't seen it's as much about a plugin. Google Analytics becomes important for tracking. Um, certainly, it's again the content that you're putting in, which is every page, every picture, every menu item, every link. And maybe I'm not understanding your question. Okay. Are you familiar with Yoast? Yoast? Yeah. No. Okay, good. Why don't you stand up because of the crowd behind you? You're writing a blog or posting a blog, plug in what's going on, how many words you have, how many keywords you have, uh, things like that. I think that's what you're talking about. So she's asking you that plug in. I mean, when I do that, I always do it. All, I always do that offline because I'm kind of creating my content ahead of time. 
I'm, I'm still missing, I think, the question. Let's talk offline about it, because so, I don't want to uh, hold up the last few minutes we have. Any other questions, or Jerry? Uh, Google Analytics code. Uh, that can also be put into the WordPress site. Yep. Okay. Yep. Any website. Should be any website. And actually, if you build on Google Blogger, it's built in. Any other questions? Oh, yeah. It's bigger than you have time for, but there are a lot of companies out there that will tell you about it, how essential it is for buying SEO work, and it can be extraordinarily expensive. It can be. And I just, if you talk about the Wild West out there, and I've seen so many people get taken advantage of it. Another thing I've seen from the taken advantage perspective is if you get a website done by some of these big web companies that also offer SEO, and you'll say, I'm not going to do SEO right now. Kind of behind the scenes, I've seen twice where there's a switch setting in your website, I'm oversimplifying it, that tells Google, ignore me. And you will never be found by Google. And then what they say is, and buy our SEO services. And then you'll be seen. Eventually. Well, they'll see my, uh, my, my foot in their butt. So just make sure that if you're contracting with a web designer, Anybody that if you talk SEO as part of the process, make sure that you can be seen. Even if not ready for full blown. And it doesn't have to be very expensive, but it can get expensive. Some of your trust, yeah. Sounds very So on my uh, website, kind of in the middle is a menu item. It's called workshops. What do you think's there? Workshops, good. Okay, you saw it. And then yeah, there's uh, recently offered presentations. This whole slide deck is there. Right now it's the top one. So you can download it for free. Any other questions before we take off for lunch? Oh, um, Prince, I'll leave it up here. Princeton Tech Advisors. Um, I've got business cards here. And I've actually got magnetic business cards on the table if you'd like for your refrigerator or heating system. <laughs> Um, it is time for lunch. There is Thank lunch you. here. There